How's it going? This is Mike coming back at you with another video on number theory. In the previous video, we talked about the division on the algor algorithm, my apologies, uh, a very basic uh, statement, a very basic uh, fact, yet very, very important uh, as we are going to be using uh, this guy not only later on in this chapter, but later on in the course as well. We also uh, looked at uh, a sample uh, problem or two uh, just to see how we can use uh, this guy to uh, prove some facts about uh, numbers. I'm not going to say they're the most useful facts because we don't typically use these facts uh, in our uh, daily lives when we work with math, but we can still nonetheless use uh, the division algorithm to prove some facts about uh, numbers. And we also use the uh, division algorithm to come up with definitions for an even and an odd number. In this video, we're gonna go, th we're gonna go through a few more sample problems uh, to see how we can use the algorithm uh, to prove other facts um, about uh, whole numbers. And these types of problems uh, are more like the types of problems that you'll see on homework, uh, quizzes, and or tests. So first one here, uh, show that the square of any integer a is of the form 3k or 3k plus 1. By the division algorithm, a is of the form either 3q, 3q plus 1, or 3q plus 2. And we need to establish uh, the result in each case. Uh, so questions will be worded uh, very much uh, like this. Uh, it'll say show that something has to hold, and then afterwards it'll say by the uh, division algorithm, your integer is of one of possible forms. You could have to establish the result for every possible case, uh, or if there's a lot of cases that it could be, uh, I'll only ask you to establish the results for uh, particular uh, cases. Uh, we'll be seeing that in uh, later on in this video. So we have to show that uh, if A is of the form 3Q, we get something of the form 3K or 3K plus 1. Then if A is of the form 3Q plus 1, then we need to show uh, that a squared is of the form 3k or 3k plus 1. And then we assume a is of the form 3q plus 2. And then we have to show that a squared is of the form 3k or 3k plus 1. So let's just get right into it with the first case. Uh, if a is equal to 3q, where q is some whole number, then a squared, well, a is 3q, therefore a squared is 3q squared, uh, which is 9q squared. Well, I can pull a 3 out of that to give me the 3 times the 3q squared. Now, this guy is a whole number. A q, we assumed, was a whole number. Uh, if you take a whole number and multiply it by itself, you get a whole number. Uh, and if you multiply that by a whole number, you get a whole number. So this thing here is an element in the set of all whole numbers. So this thing is of the form uh, 3k, where k equals 3q squared, which, as we just said, is indeed a whole number. Uh, so this establishes the results for the case where A is of the form uh, 3Q. Let's move on to our next case, where A is of the form 3Q plus 1, where again Q is going to be uh, some whole number. If I square this, that's going to give me uh, 9Q squared plus 6Q plus 1. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is not typically something that we uh, would do. Uh, typically, if we're pulling uh, common factors out, typically we only do that when every single term that we have all contains uh, that same common factor. 
But because of the nature of our problem and because of what we want to show, when I look at these first two terms here, I see that both of these terms have a common factor of three. And I can pull that three out. Uh, so this thing right here is equal to three times three Q squared plus two Q. And then we still have that plus one there. And if I look at the three Q squared plus two Q, um, Q was a whole number uh, and products and sums of whole numbers are whole numbers. So this thing right here, this three Q squared plus two Q, that is a whole number. Uh, so I have three times some whole number plus one or three K plus one. Uh, and this is what we wanted to show. Again, K was three Q squared plus two Q. We've shown that A squared is three times some whole number uh, plus one. That establishes our result for the second case where A is three Q plus one. Moving on to our third, <laughs> third and final case. A is of the form 3q plus 2, where again, q is some whole number. If I square this, I get 9q squared plus 12q plus 4. And now I'm going to do something a little bit odd with it. Um, I'm going to take that last term there, that 4, and I'm going to nicely break it up into something that's going to allow me to get to the end result that I want to get to. I'm going to purposely break that 4 up as 3 plus 1. So I'm going to look at it as 9q squared plus 12q plus 3 plus 1. And looking at the first three terms, each of those terms contains a factor of 3. So I can pull that 3 out. And that gives me three times the quantity, 3q squared plus 4q plus 1, and then plus 1. And if I look at the 3q squared plus 4q plus 1, um, again, we assumed q was a whole number. Uh, therefore, uh, just like the previous case, products and sums of whole numbers are whole numbers. Uh, so this whole thing here is a whole number. And we have thus shown that this thing here is of the form 3k plus 1. 3 times some whole number plus 1. So we've shown the claim, our claim that a squared is of the form 3k or a 3k uh, plus 1, we've shown that that's true for each of our three possible cases. Uh, so therefore, we have finished our uh, problem, uh, and we have now formally shown that the fact or the claim uh, is indeed uh, true. But overall, look at what you're doing in these problems. You are given some cases to work with, you let each of those cases, in this case 3q, 3q plus 1, and 3q plus 2, uh, substitute those in for your um, integer a or n or whatever uh, it is. Plug it into the formula that is given to you in the question or is um, described to you in the uh, uh, question uh, and show how you can take what you find and put it into uh, the form or one of the forms 
uh, that you want to show that it can go into. So we'll see more samples of this in our next two problems. Speaking of which, our second problem, show that for any integer n greater than or equal to one, n times n plus one times two n plus one is an integer, is a whole number. By the division algorithm, n is of the form 6q, 6q plus 1, 6q plus 2, dot, 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 all the way up to and including 6q plus 5. Uh, establish the result for the cases 6q plus 2 and 6q uh, plus 5. So just a little bit of background here. If we take any whole number and we divide it by 6, there are six possible forms it can have. You can have six times Q plus a remainder, and that remainder is either zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Um, showing that this is true for all six cases uh, is just time consuming. It's uh, redundant. So we only, so this is why I only ask you to do it for just a couple of them. But let's work with the first case that we're asked to uh, look at, the 6q plus 2. So if n is of the form 6q plus 2, where q is some whole number, uh, if I take this and substitute it in for every n uh, in my formula here, uh, I get 6q plus 2 times 6q plus 3 times 12q plus 5. Now, Let's take a look at the terms on the top and let's see if we can make uh, arriving at the result that we want to get to uh, really nice. Uh, looking in this first term here, uh, each term contains a common factor of two. So I can rewrite this first term as two times three Q plus one. Uh, looking at the second term here, uh, each of those terms contains a common factor of 3. So I can rewrite that as 3 times 2q plus 1. And then we still have the uh, 12q plus 5. Now, the order in which we multiply terms does not matter. Uh, so I can combine that 2 times the 3 to give me 6 times the 3q plus 1 times the 2q plus 1 times the 12q plus 5. And now we see that we have a 6 on the top and a 6 on the bottom, and we can cancel those guys out, and we're just left with 3q plus 1 times 2q plus 1 uh, times 12q plus 5. Well, uh, since q was a whole number, uh, each of these three factors are whole numbers as well, and products of whole numbers are whole numbers, so therefore this thing is an integer, uh, and we've shown what we wanted to show for this first case. If n is of the form 6q plus 2, then we do indeed get a whole number. Moving on to our uh, Second and last case that we have to show, n is of the form 6q plus 5, where q is some whole number. If I make the substitution, uh, I have 6q plus 5 times 6q plus 6 times 12q plus 11. Uh, and looking at this term right here, each of those terms contains a common factor of 6. So I have 6 times q plus 1. And then I can cancel that 6 out with the 6 on the bottom because I'm multiplying all the stuff on the top. Gone, gone. Uh, and we have leftover 6q plus 5 times q plus 1 times 12q plus 11. Each of these guys, once again, are integers and products of integers are integers. So we have shown for this 
second problem here for these two particular cases uh, that um, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6 is an integer. And yes, this was worded a little bit differently uh, compared to our uh, first problem, but we're still going through the same kind of steps. We're still trying to do the same kind of process. We're taking a particular form, we're substituting it in for our um, integer a or n, uh, we're substituting that into a formula, and we are trying to see by pulling factors out, canceling things out, uh, combining things, uh, we're trying to show the a particular result that we want to show. So a third problem, one more here. This is the problem that was uh, given to us inside of our notes. Uh, show that for any integer n greater than or equal to 1, that n times n squared plus 2 all divided by 3 is an integer. Once again, by the division algorithm, n is of one of three forms, either 3q, 3q plus 1, or 3q plus 2. Um, we're going to only establish the result for the cases 3q and 3q plus 2. Doing the third case wouldn't take much more time, but let's only do two here. So we'll start off with uh, n being of the form 3q. q is some whole number. Make the substitution, and we get uh, 3q times, times 9q squared plus 2. Well, we have the 3 on top. We have the 3 on bottom. Cancel those out. We're left over with q times 9q squared plus 2. These guys are integers on their own. And once again, products of integers are integers. So in this case, we do see that we indeed get an integer. Second case, 3q plus 2, where q is some whole number. Make the substitution. We get 3q plus 2 times 9q squared plus 12q plus 6. Uh, we need to uh, find a factor of 3 on the top to cancel out with the 3 on the bottom. Uh, that factor of 3 comes from pulling a 3 out of each of the terms in our quadratic. So we get 3 times 3q plus 2 times 3q squared plus 4q plus 2. The threes cancel out, and we're left with 3q plus 2 times 3q squared plus 4q plus 2, which is indeed an integer. Again, products and sums uh, and also differences of integers are integers. So these were just a few sample problems. Uh, seeing how we use the division um, algorithm uh, to prove some facts about uh, numbers. You'll be given a formula, you'll be given a certain property that you have to show holds, uh, you'll be given the possible forms that, that your um, integer can take, uh, and then the question will also specify to establish the result for a handful of those cases uh, or uh, to establish the results for all of those cases. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, until the next video, take it easy, guys.